And, you know, the, the numbers just came out this morning. I haven't seen them yet, you know, as to how many jobs are created the last month, what the um, unemployment rate is. We have these very broad conversations, whether on CNBC or elsewhere, about income inequality, disparity, the gap. Um, the political discourse is such that the Alice community, identified by some as takers, even though they may be working 40 hours a week, uh, the homeless, again, as willfully unemployed. What, what does a report like Alice mean when you get away from the abstractions that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis? Pick up on your point about what you found in the report with, with regards to suburbanization poverty. The Brookings Institution, I think it was last spring, did a really great uh, national study that showed that this, this suburbanization of poverty is a national trend. Uh, you know, we're seeing it in New Jersey also. Um, the other piece of you know, what John got at is something that I've been really pushing um, when I work with, and I'm working with a group in Florida who are also engaged in an Alice report, is that you know, the data is really important. The data in your report is important. The data that's gonna come out in the Alice report. But what's really, really important is this gives you a chance to develop a narrative. This gives you a chance to develop a narrative for what you want your communities to look like. Not just today, not just a year from now, but 10, 20 years from now for your children, for your grandchildren and their, and their children. Really does, you know, this narrative, it puts a face, right, a family to, to, to any of these issues. Uh, and, and what I really love about what you're doing is you are jumping into a broader national, international conversation about income inequality. That over the last few decades, there's been an increasing desire to, and need to talk about it, but in this, the last, few, last year or so, it is front and center. And New Jersey, Connecticut, we are at the, we are at the center of this conversation. People are gonna be looking at us today in the future and seeing how we dealt with the growing income inequality uh, or the surging income inequality. We have sown the seeds for a third growth in income inequality. We have been disinvesting or slowing down our investment in what the United Nations called human priorities. And I've, been do I've done some research and I'll look past and every time we've slowed down our investments in human priorities, that's led to growing income inequality. So, 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 I, so at the sort of macro level, I'm really, really great, grateful that you all are wanting to dive into this broader conversation. At the micro level, you know, this is, I've been fortunate. Um, I just have, I sort of go back into my life and I've, I've been fortunate I have not, you know, been in an Alice. Uh, my family did, 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 did okay growing up, but you have now the opportunity from an economic competitive standpoint, but also just from what we say at the United Way, living united and advancing the common good. And that's what this report will position you to do, to a better job at. All right.